So, welcome everyone in MonkeyConf 2021. My name is Bohran and I work at Nexio Management. I'm Microsoft MVP and really love to speak about Maui, Xamarin firms, also love to drink some beer. Once was like a, two years ago, I saw first time conference with a beer. It was so like me that each conference that we made in Jeshu, each meetup, we trying to make with a beer because then after party just looks slightly better and it's easier to make some communication. So what I'm doing, day in daily, I'm a lead Xamarin developer and work with a different complexity of UI, but each of them is a uh, made in a modern way with some microtransactions with a lot of elements that should be fast, should be smooth according to all platforms. It's for mostly Android and iOS, uh, but we also trying to support the oldest version and really rarely some UVP solution as well, but mostly it's on the Android and iOS in what about we'll speak today. As I mentioned, I really love to be a speaker in different conferences, also with Martin, creator of Magic Radians, and Bogus creator of Jeshu uh, Zamarin Meetup. We make in some meetups in Jeshu and Krakow. Sometimes we make it online, but mostly I love to join the after party. And it's really, if any conference I hope will be in the next year offline, <laughs> join after party. It's something that it's really need to join. And right now we're doing less conferences online because when we have a possibility, we're trying to make it offline. But doing it online, and I will skip the slide because probably you already know what is Maui. You know a difference because the whole conference about that. I will just answer you right now. Why Zamri? Why are speaking about Zamri 2021? Uh, the Great answer we have from James Montemagno. All links, like uh, 60 links for you for evening reading, watching, coding will be in the end of the presentation. But at um, the moment, I'm doing the app that should be stable, works really nice, smooth in both platforms, and can be released before the Maui become a stable release in the Q2 in 2022, I hope. So it's the main reason that we need still need to stay with Xamarin. Also, I probably you already know that it will be really easy to migrate from Xamarin to Maui. So it's not a problem to start with Xamarin. Uh, years ago, we have a problem since 2000 that mobile application should work, not be nice looking. But hopefully last year I stopped hearing that. But even two years ago, I was creating a couple enterprise applications that just should work. It's no matter how it looks. But nowadays, we're trying to make it beautiful. And it's good. And what about, speak about beautiful, it's also meaning some good UI and UX parts. Because as you may see, both examples has the same structure, has the same labels, and same icons in the same places. But a contrast, some couple curve shapes and blur just making wow effect. I know it's not the best ever design, but it's pretty simple and it works even in 2021. And today, my first part of the presentation will be about some, showing some code, mostly for some more younger developers, but second part will be about some new gets and how you can achieve a more complex way. So let's start from Leo Maris and his awesome blog about that calendar UI. Let me start it. Uh, mostly all layout in Xamarin are done with stack layout where you can place element one by one horizontally or vertically, always a grid. Where you can place one on another or separate with the grids, uh, with a rows and a columns. We have a lot of other layouts, for example, flex layout, absolute layouts, but as far as I get, like 85, even 90% of all even complex views are done with grid and stack layout. So it's a good uh, start point for probably most of your application. And as you may see, he proposed that complex layout at first to divide a smaller part. Because when you divide some complex div UI to some small parts, it will be really easy to implement because we will know how to done the easiest way. 
So for example, let's start from welcome wall, where we have image, icon image, in her case, installing an image, some box view to represent a line and some text. So as we may see, everything are done in a grid. For that, we have a couple rows and columns. Uh, our image are placing in the zero row and column two, zero, one, two, and has some height request. Our text, here it is a label, representing slower on top of that image. And we have a couple different possibilities to achieve that. First of all, having a column span, as we have it to collapse to column, or a row span, to be a, two rows. And if when each element is replacing a bow, will be on the top of previous one. But here we have another solution with a margin. I'll notice that it's not right, because even I'm sometimes doing that because it's useful. Uh, and it's the way he achieving that overalling the image. Also, in the bottom, we have a collection view. It's a not a whole like 2000 new element, but it's like a two years old already. So it's just replacing of list view because much more has performance, this approach according comparing to list view. And here we have a data template which can be moved to different resources to reuse across the whole application. And inside, we have our card done with a frame. There is a shadow and vertical line. And inside it, we have our collection view to have the scrollable sub items. Also, something still not so new because it's a year old, but a new way to making that and achieving is okay, just a little wait a moment for Marcos. Uh, is to make just the same with a stack layout because right now each element, each uh, view element can be iterable like a list thanks to bin double layout. We just need to pass item source and passing item templates. Also, it supports empty templates if we need to represent something if we have no items inside our collection. And we need to wrap it in a scroll view to have a scroll label. Because if we weren't doing that, it will be just uh, showing everything in the screen and can go outside of it. It will be not so beautiful. It's how it can be done. Really doing really just a couple lines of a code. Stack, label, frame, inside another frame with a couple more labels. Okay. And now let's speak about bold colors. It's a great example from Dribble, you'll have a link for, to it, with just a four colors across the whole application. It really looks fresh, interesting. But for me, that color slightly too bright, I would like to say. And I'll just make it small darker according to A position. But it's still the great example how only with four colors you grow the whole application. And we have one more nice example from Leo Maris about that making that beautiful angles for different controls. But this will be for your homework because I have a lot of another interesting stuff to show you. It will be pretty simple. Also, starting with the grids inside the scroll label, the collection view, and all that corners will be done with spanking view, which allowing you to specify which corner you would like to have what values. Because with a frame, we can set only one value, like for a button. So each corner rise will be just 25. We can modify each of them. So it will be for your homework. And we going to Altivir. With that, sorry, with that furniture example. Let me open it. Also, I'm using Rider. It's I don't want to promote it because it's really up to you what you better prefer. But for me, just resharper possibilities with uh, navigate to finding reference just make life easier for me in a complex project. But as you may see, it have errors <laughs> on new Mac M1. So 
a uh, couple things that I'd like to show you right now is that awesome shadow on the top and hero navigation when we open in an item. And also we'll focus on that chair, how it was done. So let me start it. And meanwhile, showing you how the shadows are done. So we don't, we have everything scroll view inside one huge grid. Inside we have the first grid, it's not interesting for us. Also a stack layout. Now we have a collection view for that chairs and other elements on the top. In just a moment we'll start to show you what I'm talking about. Please don't die, okay. No, it's usually this demo. Okay, it stands for that collection. And here we're using pancake view to make it beautiful rounded. And image also interesting done because the background for image we done with this circle box view standing in the same color row and a column. As you may see, we have two columns here and this not specified row. When we not specify row and column is predefined to zero. So just on the same place as I talking about that box view on the uh, background and image on the top. And when we select it, we have the beautiful, let me just zoom it slightly, shadow. That shadow are done with right into the sharp nada shadows, new git package, really good one, where we can specify offset, opacity, color, blue radius, and really customize the default shadows that we have on the frames, for example. So we can just follow your design. Also, how we showing and hiding it. It's quite interesting way name mm, triggers. So we have a data trigger and when we select our item, we on the view model just change the selected um, property of our model and we reacting when that selected property is false we set our shadow to zero just zero pass zero set and zero blue uh, blue radius and when we change it back it just return to initial value second thing that i would like to show you is that grid with sales first of all that label is just a uh, formatted string with couple spans which represents a part of that label to have that 70% slightly bigger. And as you may see, it's, we have some visual issue. So it's really need to redesign slightly uh, or rework that um, part of the design because with that furniture, we can't share all the text, it's not good. But it's really um, to check if you just check with iPhone 13 and SE as the smallest and the regular device and also the same doing on Android. So our chair is, where it is, it's image, yeah. It's image also with some minuses in margin to um, have it slightly above the initial frame. And here we also are making that with on platform, which gives us possibility to modify some values for our platform for Android, iOS, UWP, and other. And also wide and height request. Next thing from here is when we are open our beautiful cards, we have that hero navigation. As you may see, our chairs goes on top and it's done really easy because in, ah, I can close it as usually with demo. Let me rerun it. Uh, when we click here, we have it in data collection, just agreed with spanking view for make it everything beautiful. And we have our image with shared transaction name furniture and a group where we buy the ID of our element, our model for that. What we do, what we're doing in the view model is before navigation, we also passing our product to open and 
tell us to share a transaction navigation page that we share inside our product, a product ID image. And nothing need to be done on details page. We just have an image. It's also quite interesting done because everything inside the grid is on the background. On the top, we have only that image and frame on the bottom. And for that frame, we just mentioned the same transaction name. And that's it. And we have beautiful navigation with shared transaction nugget package. How I, I really don't know how it's. So, animated graphic and micro transactions. It's really important in modern application to have it. But it is it's just a slight delay with some change of opacity. We just not showing each element on UI immediately, but we need to show it. It's appear from the bottom, from the right, just changing opacity, just slightly uh, change the X or Y value, and it makes that interesting effect. For that, I have a really awesome example. Let me open it. It's, oh, sorry. It's the last example. Uh, and zone from Kim. And let's see how it looks like. It's really done only with a couple lines with the built it into Xamarin uh, transactions, where we just changing the opacity, rotation, and x y values. That's all. So for first of all, for opening our maybe just I will open it. I'm not deploying, it will be slightly faster. <laughs> so let's start from animating close button. It's that close button when we click, it's appearing from the bottom and disappearing back. It's also done really easy because at, at first we check what we need, showing it or hide, and then change the opacity with fading, we're not waiting for it, changing the rotation, and then translate. So rotating with fading and translation to top or to the bottom. That's it. Also for opening each that card, this will start for infinity time. Uh, each that card, we just set rotation to minus x and opacity to zero. And then we just fade. We're not waiting for that fade, but wait for rotating. This is how it looks like. Zero. And rotating and translating together. Have some problems that offer with that uh, gestures. Also, I would like to prefer that visibility right after changing that values. But for us, if our application is smooth, it will be just immediately. But if we're doing a lot of work, especially for Android on UI thread, we may see some delays on that. But it's more about performance. Uh, also, just for closing, we made in opposite, just finding and rotating back to zero and minus ninety. Also, quite interesting, we have is a flip card. Probably that never starts. <laughs> so let's see it here. Flipping. So first of all, we have two elements. First, it is visible right now, and second, it will be visible later. First, we rotating the visible to minus 90, and then hiding and show the next one from 90 to zero. So it's just half the screen disappearing next from half the screen immediately appearing. And here, we have that nice effect. And with all that animation, you can learn probably everything. Right? Yeah, we need a lot of testing because it's when I'm doing something like that, I just need a lot of times to rerun it because it can't be high. We can use hot reload, rerun it, check it. Once again, it will not be really smooth according to us. Because the delays, it's really the hardest thing that we can select. What's the right way to waiting? Here it. How much it is? It's 300, sometimes 250, sometimes even half a second. So it's really depend. And we continue. And wow, what do we see here? It will be a homework. Don't make Javier disappointing of you. Check it out. It's really cool because we have that showing the card. We have parallax effect here on the image. And it's something you need to check. It's not the newest block, but it's really up to top if you plan to make something similar. I will not show you. Uh, next one, 
I think we probably may skip it because we have not a lot of a time, uh, but probably I will show you a code. Login, probably login page. Not clear name for solution. I hope you will, this will start. Yeah, it start, but we have corrupting video. I just realized right before the mm, conference. Previously, I had it from uh, YouTube. It also can show YouTube videos in Xamarin application. But here is using just a standard media, media element where we just passing our source and we can just play it on the background infinite loop. We have for that autoplay and looping to true. Also, what is interesting I would like to show here is the paths. It's something new in Xamarin 5, I think, maybe 4.8 as well, are uh, uh, shapes where we can draw something with a paths. How I had the gestures when it's called. Okay, at last. Uh, so that triangle are done only with uh, three paths, where we set the initial point, then second one, third, and then it will loop. So we have the triangle with different opacity, with the uh, inspect uniform, and that's it. It's pretty simple, but what we can do with that path, because it's not so easy to create, what's that magic numbers? And for that, we have quite good example from David Ortinar where he's showing the ellipse. We're just setting the corner radius to make it orange. Then we paste the image and instead of, previously it was done like a box view inside a frame, we just inside an image. Right now it's just ellipse, on top of an image, which has a clipping enabled for one more smaller uh, image, uh, for one more smaller ellipse. And that ellipse just has a center of the half of a wide of image. And that's it, we have it. Also, all that form are done with a path, but it's really complex. You can create that path in some editors, but mostly you probably got that from designer. It's more than his work, but right now we can just open Figma, Adobe XD, or wherever it, it is. And instead of making images and added images in your app, you can just copy a path and pass it. In 95% according to my work, it was working. Otherwise, I just ask him designer to rework it and, <laughs> and continue with it. So, we want to create Xamarin for application. What nuggets should we use? Shortly, all Z list. But in a moment, I'll uh, tell a couple more words about each point. So, but before we start, we have SyncFusion, Telerik, DevExpress components, with which you can create an awesome application much more faster, but you will be restricted to what they provide. And the price, uh, it's not a cheap. It's really not a cheap. So, I don't know. In my work, I never worked with that, but I know a lot of people who work with Syncfusion, Telerik, and they are really happy with that. But sometimes when our customer with the design really requires some modification, it may be pain in the ass to change something that you can do and you need still to create your custom controls. But according to my work, you can go with custom controls for everything and you're slightly longer, but you can achieve it. And stay always with light Xamarin Forms NuGet package to have everything stable. Also, you need definitely need to use Xamarin Essentials because there you have media picker for sharing media, sharing battery, a lot of interesting stuff. For example, geolocation, geocoding that probably you will use, like in 80% of new applications, some also launchers to launch some browsers, mostly a lot of useful stuff. Also, you probably need to check out a Xamarin Community Toolkit. Thanks to Gerald, who probably every Xamarin developer know about it. But it's still something that I'm not often using, but i trying to make it more for me, for my project. Because I know that there was a lot of things that I already implement for myself. For example, that converters or some validators with a behavior or some views like avatar or badge view but it just will speed up because it's really a good quality, open source and free. So it's definitely you need to check that out. 
Also, what about NVM framework? It's really depend. It's really depends. So it's just up to you what you expect, what you need. But mostly in enterprise mobile development is a prism or NVM cross due to historical when everyone comes from native application. And right now everyone just working with Xamarin forms and using one of that to get packages. But a small open source application usually done with another MVM Lite, Micro, or fresh VM frameworks. Also, right before my session, I saw that you already talking about that reactive UI. And it's quite good framework. You can write even in your top to connect it with MVM Cross, for example, because in my work, we use the only MVM Cross. But if you looking only for the bouncer, throttling, named in React UI, we have quite small, awesome new get packages done only one that simple stuff. Debounce, which prevent you from double clicking, double launching anything you need. So if user just similar double click something by mistake, you can easily handle it with just one line of the code. Also, we have a shell. Mm, it's quite good for some example application, but I never saw any enterprise application done with that. But maybe something will change in Maui, I hope, and we may use it because the structure, how it can be fly out with stubborn bar is really awesome. I really love that approach. Skeleton is cool nugget for making easy shadow loading according to your design, just in a couple lines of a code, just wrapping all your elements with the shadow animation while you don't man, uh, don't click that it's already loaded. Also, Skia and micro charts built on Skia is something really awesome, but I don't know, we need a separate conference to talk about that because it's really huge, something really hard to start with, but it gives you a lot of awesomest approach, even according to writing some shapes even if we have a built it shapes, it still has some points to take a look on that. Also, sharp data presentation forms. It's not about the shadows that I already mentioned, but also about tabs and some navigation are done here. Also, you can see in the uh, screenshot on the middle, it's a neomorphism, quite popular in 2020. Right now it's more popular glass morphism and a broader UI, but it's still quite new for users because not a lot of applications still using that and you can surprise your users with that. It will be really easier to start with that new good instead of writing everything by yourself. Also, to make good rich pop-ups, or get plugin pop-up. Any designs there you can paste, any action, pop-up on pop-up and so, so on. It's just was really nice. Also, FF image loading, it's more like something optional, but it much faster rendering. It's much better caching image and also can show SVG images if you have any. Magic gradients. You can't just go without that if you need some cool gradients. You, you already know that in Xamarin we have gradients, but here we have it in just a next level. It's built in on Skia. And we're already creating something from Mao. We're building on uh, his uh, drawing engine. But right now, it's still good because we have like a 70 hundreds different prepared for you uh, gradients built on CSS. Because like a 95% of all CSS gradients you can find in their internet, they will work in our solution. And maps. Not so good here because never tried that Symfusion map. Quite good Naxam map, box map, but they stopped supporting, so you can't work with that at the moment. It's really, really bad. Uh, and not a huge difference between that both, but the first Xamarin form maps will use Apple Maps on Apple, Google Play Maps on Android, and a second will just use Google Play Maps on the both devices. And that's it. Uh, pancake view just to make different borders, different corners. I really love it. I know that we can replace it with a frame and shadow from a sharp nada, but I think it's still a good, good new package to check out. And lot of animations. 
quite awesome because you can attach or download in runtime different JSON animations that some, some a lot of them are free, some are paid. And just with one uh, control, you, I don't have example, use inside the example. Just load animation, give a path, give a size, give when I start and shoot it loop or not. And you have awesome animation for some loading, for some onboarding and so on. And shared transactions that I mentioned and showing today. Also, the last one is not more about UI, but I think it's you need to add it to your solution. It's a fluent validation to help you with validation of your models. So, where can I get all news and updates? Uh, weekly summary and plan summary, it's all you need, I think. Yeah. Also, you can uh, check out the summary right now, Mavi uh, community stand up twice a month usually, and also you can find someone to follow in .NET Foundation speaker stuff. Also, I attach a blog about Xamarin Tools 2021 when you can read probably about all uh, tools that you could use for Xamarin. It's not only new good packages, but also some tools for Visual Studio and other. Really a huge list. So, who can I watch and subscribe? I hope you subscribe to Javier. I really hope you do. Um, also, you can subscribe me, but <laughs> I was just play, uh, placing a video per half a year, so it's not a good advice. But at all, a good advice is James, David, and Kim. Also, Gerald. I'm a new star in YouTube, but he's doing a lot of short and useful videos, mostly about Xamarin Toolkit, but also about some fundamentals in Xamarin. Also, you can follow all Xamarin developers' uh, channel. There are more videos from Xamarin University, but it's still relevant. Also, Xamarin Guy, Xamarin University, and Dale uh, Crooks. For example, that example, that example is from that Dale Crooks channel. The link will be in the end. And let's come to tips and tricks. Styles. In all our examples, we are not using style because it's just example code. It should be simple, but in real application, never doing that. Just use the styles. Why? Because if you eject everything in the style, the same buttons will really think. You just play a style and you have it. You have inheritance in the style. If you need slightly modify only one property, you need to copy everything. You can just write uh, the new, uh, I don't know, green segmented tabs based on segmented type and check on the change on the background call and left everything the same on the base style. Also, it's interesting. I really love it, but I don't saw that anyone use that in enterprise world. It's really making me sad. Examining style. Oh, sorry. <laughs> At CSS styling, example views. So just here, uh, CSS. Also, you can wrap it with ls to make some variables and add a style class. You can group a style class. You have a lot of awesome selectors inside a CSS that you don't have inside XAML styles. It's a huge bonus of that. Also, you can have something similar, but without that selectors, it's a style classes. They create a small style classes when you can't eject the general style for that label, for example, and then group them as you need. For example, white label, it's also white, it's regular and fill and center both, but this is icon mode. It's here and one thing is not ejected here, just a font size. Playground of magic gradients, uh, because it's really separate application. We really done a lot of work, mostly marching, Gerasinski. Uh, about showing all possibilities and allowing you to play, create your own gradients, modify that, and then just share it CSS that you can copy inside your application and use it. Also, you can check out how to make animations there and other stuffs. What about design? Because you as developer need to be aware about that. 
So first of all, couple interesting uh, English channel. It's about I love UI and design course when showing the beautiful designs that you might be just want to. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, sorry, buddy. sorry to for interview. I'm going to just say that you have in the last five minutes. So yeah, in the last couple of slides, it's good. Uh, so what? No rush, no rush. Calm. You have time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, they showing how to create a simple design in some different uh, Figma or Adobe design uh, EDs. It design tools, but you can follow just step by step and create everything in C sharp and make awesome designs. Also, Michal Malevich is making only English video, but he's from Poland and he's so awesome that making couple small courses about UI in mobile apps and the most comprehensive UI design ebook, which is not so expensive and really awesome. I bought the buy and really happy with that because just. Um, growing me with my design visions. Also, he had uh, videos about how to make from zero neuromorphies, glass morphemes, and also Aurora, the differences as the best approach as what you need to avoid in your designs. It's more about implementing all them in Figma, but again, it's step by step. He told how to set shadows, what opacity and other stuff, and you can just line by line write it in your solution. So it's a link for all your links. So just take a screenshot or it's also a QR code. You can scan it. Uh, there are like a 62 links to all the resources that I use inside that um, presentation, some more additional videos and additional links. Uh, also just would like to tell that we have Xamarin firms good looking UI, you know from who, uh, where we have a lot of different awesome UI. Some examples were even from here, so you may see, but also there are a lot of another cool examples. And what is good, they have source code and sometimes have a blog post for blog where you can read about each part of the implementation. So you can just replace all my <laughs> presentation with only that one link. And I hope everyone take a screenshot. Just one more moment. And we're done.